Hello and welcome to court. So when you think about the Roaring Twenties, what do you think about? Do you think about the Harlem Renaissance? Do you think about flappers? Do you think about the musical Chicago? What do you think about? I often think about a lot of the massacres that black people had to endure in the 1920s or forceful removal for the comfort of white people in the 1920s. I don't know about you, but there's something about the pandemic, the rampant monopolies that we have, and the violence against minorities that makes me go, we're back. We're back in the roaring 20s. There are a lot of parallels between the 1920s and the 2020s, and Quite honestly, um, I'm not gonna get into every single parallel because I would be here forever, but I will get into some of the more violent acts. Before we get into the parallels between now and 100 years ago, I do want to let you know that a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about is going to be linked in the description box below, so check that out for further reading. If you haven't seen the movie Rosewood, you should watch it. It's a hard watch, but you should watch it. Rosewood was a town located in Florida. It actually was founded before the Civil War, but didn't gain large popularity until the beginning of the Reconstruction period after the war. By the 1920s, this was a fully black town. People were gainfully employed, living their lives. In 1923, a white woman who left her house bruised reported to the police that she had been attacked by a black man. She did specify that she was not assaulted, but she did say that she was attacked. Her husband not only gathered a very large white angry mob, he went so far as to gather a mob including Ku Klux Klan members from surrounding counties to go after the black man that assaulted her. You know, that black man, the black one. By the end of this massacre, Rosewood did not exist anymore. And obviously many black people lost their lives. A few years before this in 1921, a similar incident brought detrimental and still long-lasting harm, like still today long-lasting harm, to the Greenwood community of Tusla. A white woman accused a black man of assaulting her and all hell broke loose. There are more examples of this sort of violence against black people in the I would say like mid to late teens to the 1920s linked down in the description, either through violence or through legislation to make white people more comfortable. And I do want to specify that these specific cases that I'm talking about that I've linked about are reported and recognized. There is so much of black history that has just been passed down orally that it takes years, decades, centuries for someone to actually do the work. I mean, think about the 1619 Project. And when you really think about this, it doesn't really make sense if you're just looking at the different violent incidents that happened. I mean, the Civil War was, what, 60, 50, 60 years before that. Um, we gone through the reconstruction period. At this point, these black towns, these black cities, these black counties, they're established. At the time, there was a lot of racist media. And I'm not just talking about advertisements, although the advertisements were prevalent. I'm talking about even the way that black people were spoken about in media segments, so whether that was on the radio or whether that was in the news, it wasn't always in the best light. And it definitely only aided in the radicalization of many white people. And unfortunately, there were a lot of white people, just like today, 
who just wanted to follow the laws and didn't want to get their hands dirty and just wanted to be polite and just wanted things the way they were. Everything was fine, but everything wasn't fine. Massacres, even at this time, were a lot more rare than it has been sensationalized. Now, that is not to downplay any of the violence that has happened whatsoever at all. But at the time, white people had a way of preventing things from escalating, and that was lynchings. Now, I do want to make this clear. White people were still beating the hell out of black people. That, that didn't stop. But lynchings were a very widespread and succinct way to send a message. Lynchings were a form of very succinct crowd control. Black people were well aware that if you were even in the wrong place at the wrong time, completely innocently doing nothing, just you got around the wrong folks, there was a threat that someone you know or yourself could be lynched. Lynchings could happen in the middle of the night, and they did. They did. But the control aspect really incorporated the show of the lynching. The kidnapping of the person from their home by a large group of armed white people. The taking them away from their family maybe continuing to threaten the family at that point. And then the act itself, publicly and sometimes in the daytime for everyone to see. As you can imagine, this would rock any community and it obviously would very much rock the black community. And I do want to state here, when I say the black community, I am saying the black community, not the black southern community, the black community. In the description box, I have let you see, <laughs> linked to a, um, a link of a map that shows the known lynchings in America, on American soil. There used to be an interactive map of this, and I very much wanted to link to it, but unfortunately, the map itself, that link is broken. It was even more detailed than the map that I linked below. Lynchings did not have to be limited to one person. Sometimes it included multiple people. The point was to terrify black people. And terrify black people it did, so much so that Ethel Waters made comment about coming to perform in a town while she was touring and singing and a person had been lynched that day and they had brought their body into the place that she was meant to perform. She did end up performing. She didn't want to, um, but she did end up performing because the black people just wanted some more, some normality. Sorry. I'll have that linked below. It's a, it's a doozy. This was such a common and well understood occurrence in the black community. We get the phrase strange fruit hanging from a tree. Strange fruit. Moving forward to today, much like the 1920s and preceding the 1920s, the rise of hate crimes against black people has been steadily increasing. I've linked below talking more about that. I do want to take a sidebar. I've talked about how difficult it is to get something classified as a hate crime on this channel before, but I do want to belabor that point again. The fact that the link below shows that black people have been the recipients of hate crimes more than any other minority. And I should mention that link is from 2018. It says a lot. 
because it is very hard to convince someone that something is a hate crime. How do you prove someone is a hate crime? Well, they said a slur. Well, how do we know that was racially motivated? That, that's a real thing. That's a real thing that victims are told. So the fact that it has been documented so many times it makes you kind of wonder how many times something wasn't classified as a hate crime. We, we will touch on that more. From the mass shooting at a black church in 2015 to the Buffalo grocery store shooting, leaving black people dead, black elders mostly dead, there's been a steady rise. And the difference is that it doesn't take 100 or 500 or 1,000 white people to utterly destroy black people. It takes one person, just one. In 2020, there was a rise of reports on lynchings. Lynchings have never stopped, but there was a rise of reporting because it was trendy to report on black drama in the summer of 2020. Do something about that? Mm -mm. And a lot of the resolutions for those lynchings were ruled as being a suicide. Now, I just wanna take another little detour. Um, a lynching is not the same as someone taking their life by suicide. Um, there are very different things happening. Uh, typically, lynchings are public, like I said. Typically, the person is found where they wouldn't normally be. So maybe they are in a county over or just maybe in a part of town that they wouldn't typically go to. Maybe they are kind of in an abandoned field. Um, it's typically a sort of situation where, uh, why would this person be in this situation in the first place? And that alone <laughs> doesn't, doesn't account for the fact that like, Sometimes people are literally bound and gagged before this act of violence happens. But reports of suicide in this manner when it occurs in the black community, it's very common. A lot of things are ruled as suicides because once again, it is very hard to report a hate crime and have it actually be investigated as such. A lot of the documented lynchings that we're able to research now are researchable because newspapers would straight up be like, this many white men lynched this black person yesterday. Also, there is a job opening down at the shoe store. Like it was, it was regularly reported news. Sometimes it would even name the white men, which wild, right? But I do want to make it clear for most black people, we know the trauma of lynching um, throughout the American uh, diaspora and would, and I can't speak for all black people, but would typically not choose such a violent act to our community as a method to take one's own life. So the fact that suicide is so easily struck down in these instances and there is very little further investigation unless a lot of stink is made about it, uh, says a lot. Which brings us to Rasheem Carter. I have linked the article that details the last few days of his life and his death below. Please take a chance to read it. It's pretty in depth for a news article. I think his murder is so impactful because it follows all the rules of things we've seen in history. A black man is being chased by white men. He doesn't really know why. He just is. He goes for help um, with locals and to the police who <laughs> don't believe him. He's murdered. And then his body is found a very brief investigation is done on it. And, uh-oh, 
looks like a suicide. You'll see at the end of his article, it follows the same path. I say all of that to say this. Society is not moving forward. We are literally, literally repeating history. And just like I said, instead of it taking 500 white men, it takes one. Just yet another hate crime that results in murder being swept under the rug. So I'ma say this with my whole chest. Quietly being an activist ain't it. You're not an activist. You're not helping. Your quiet and demure donations to the organizations that you can write off on your taxes look good on paper. Because money is cool, but you can't buy your life back. But all of your historical faves who are revolutionary, who did things, who tried to make a change and who made changes and who made strives weren't quiet. They weren't quiet. And guess what? The average person staying at home couldn't be quiet either. They couldn't be quiet in their everyday life. They couldn't be quiet at their job. What if Ruby Bridges' teacher was quiet? Maybe if she like supported black people, but just like didn't tell anybody. She wouldn't have been teaching Ruby Bridges. Folks in this historical fashion community, historical costuming community, love Miss Susan B. Anthony and her problematic self. But what if she was just, what if she didn't want to ruffle any feathers? Like she just didn't, like she donated, she donated to the votes of women, but like she just didn't want to. She didn't want to say anything. She didn't want to tell anybody. She didn't, like, she didn't, didn't want to get her hands dirty. But, like, she supported the votes for women. Certain women. What if that neighbor down the street that brought that casserole dish over to that first black family to move into their neighborhood didn't do that? What if they didn't do that? We are at a point in history where we are absolutely doomed to repeat it. Absolutely. And I just want to know what's going to happen in 20 or 30 years when there is another wave of civil rights movement that is loud and is in your face and goes on for more than a summer. Will you be loud then?